So we're just going to wait for this to, as you can see, my pan is leaking a little bit because it ha it needs to expand a little bit when it goes to pressure. So sometimes it'll leak, but then it'll stop, and sometimes it won't stop. So I often fiddle with this little thing here to try to get it tight. But the one thing you don't want to do is once you have this on and under pressure, it would be very difficult to do because this holds so tight once it's under pressure, the handle here, but you don't want to open it. That's where you hear of all those accidents. The reason people are afraid of pressure cookers is because if they get clogged, if this little hole here gets clogged, the pressure will build up, build up, build up like, you know, after a day at work and you've had just such a cruddy day and you want to go home and kick the dog because all that pressure is, or, you know, yell at your partner. <laughs> you can, it will just burst. So what, when, you, when you saw the things in the pot, I never fill the pot more than three-fourths full. If you're cooking something like oatmeal or peas, then um, it should be even less half full. And rice, too. So I'm going to turn off the camera now so as not to bore you and wait for this to go to pressure. And I'll turn it back on when it's at pressure. And then we'll let it cook for a while. Okay. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes and it's whole, you know, even though this is a really old pot, this pot is over 25 years old. It's doing good. It's not leaking. I think it'll hold the water for the soup. Good. This is over 15 pounds. This is steady, but it's a little bit, doesn't have to be rocking that vigorously. So I'm going to lower the heat a little bit. Okay, so I've let it go for about 20 minutes and you can hear it jiggling in the background, keeping nice pressure. And so I'm gonna put the soup bowl to catch the stock of the soup bowl, hopefully that'll be big enough, and catch all the bones and the leftover onions here. And uh, there's the timer. So let me go get the pan and we'll, uh, what we're first gonna do is I'm gonna let it just sit for a while to lose its pressure. Okay, so we're back and it's, I've let it go down. It's still hot. The pot is still hot, but all the steam is gone. And I'll open this up and hopefully it won't steam up the camera too much. Uh, it looks okay. So there we have it. Our soup, our stock, and I'll just drain this out. You can see it's really done a good job. It smells really good too. So there you have the stock. It looks really, really good. Very flavorful. And I'm just going to actually um, let this rest. It's hot enough to leave out while I boil up some noodles to put in it. I don't boil the noodles with the stock because that would absorb all the liquid and you'd have nothing left for soup. So I'll boil something up and then I'll be back. So what I think I'll use is some fancy bow tie um, pasta. And I think I'll use it because these remind me of butterfly wings, which is a great metaphor for transformation. And since it's going to be the new year, I'm welcoming in transformation. So we'll make this, we'll call this our transformational turkey soup. So I'm gonna use some of this Herbox chicken flavoring in the water for the noodles. Notice I'm just putting the water in the pressure cooker again to keep it um, low maintenance meal. It's a one pan, so I won't have a lot to, oops, that's, well, that's, a, that's good. So what'll happen is this will absorb, the noodles will absorb a chicken flavor, which will really go well with the turkey soup. And because I'm doing this in a one pot meal, um, all I have to really clean up is these turkey bones and make sure I get them in the trash so my dog doesn't get them. She would love to, but that would be very bad. Okay, so I'm off the, mo the Gorillapod right now. As you can see, the Gorillapod is over here. I took it off so I could bring it over here easily. To show you as it's cooling down, I have this nice skin forming and what that skin is made of is fat. So we're just going to put it over here 
take it out and uh, just to lessen the fat in the soup and we're still boiling the water over here it's almost to boil it's kind of fun watching it come to a boil with little bits of flavoring and turkey and garlic in there that were left over in the pan and what I'm going to use is the farfowl pasta and um, I'm going to only use about a half a box because I don't have a lot of broth and I don't want to, you know, I want some broth for soup and I don't want the pasta to totally absorb it. So as you can see, we're now going over to broiling broil, uh, boil. So I think we can put this in. good and I'm cooking with one hand and filming with the other so the water will absorb this and then we'll put the chicken broth and this is finished in about eight or nine minutes put the chicken broth back into this pot pan and we'll add the last of the leftover turkey meat Okay, so I've cooked them a couple minutes less than what the box suggests because I really want them to be a little less than al dente. So when I uh, strain them, I can put the turkey soup in there and cook them a little more and they will absorb some of the uh, turkey flavoring into the noodle, which is important. So I do see my, leg, my lens getting fogged from this, so I'll empty it and be back. And it does smell very good set up and you can see it's a pretty good ratio of soup and noodles and now we'll get the meat out of the refrigerator and we'll add this and we might as well just add it all because leftovers don't last that long and I don't bother really cutting it up I don't mind the big chunks I like a home style soup some people might put uh, potatoes in here as well, or carrots, but I just like a basic, simple soup. I'm gonna warm this up to cook the noodles a little bit more for about a couple more minutes and just warm the turkey meat through. And then I'm just gonna put some in a bowl and add some lemon to it and for a little bit of a spark. Actually, I can add the lemon now. This also helps cut any fat that remains but as you saw there wasn't really a lot of fat left but I'm part Greek so um, we like to add lemon to nearly everything so it's really good and if I need I don't want to do too much because not everyone are fans of lemon as much as I am but I'll just add more into my bowl and so that's it and I'm now I'm going to move on to making some bread some some bread to go with this and maybe I'll film that as well thank you for watching and bon appetit! Okay, it's going to take about 45 minutes for the bread to bake. So I have to try this before then. So I'm going to put it into my little peace and love bowl right here. Peace and love for our transformational turkey soup. That seemed like an appropriate bowl. Okay, so now I'll just spoon some out. I'm, I'm filming this by holding the camera in one hand. And remember everybody, this is my first, first video. Oh, okay, let's try putting it over here. Less steam. Okay, that should be good for now. I'll take a little bit of the lemon and put a little more in there. Yeah, I love lemon. Try it. It's really good. Okay, thank you everyone for watching this video. Peace and love and enjoy some transformational turkey soup.